U.S. Bank is proud to join Deluxe as a partner in Season 5 of the Small Business Revolution, bringing their passion for small business to Fredonia, New York. For more financial tips and resources, go to usbank.com backslash SBR. be part of this. We're going to be able to support your businesses, let the world know about you guys as well. We are just over at um, Om Nam, and I had a everything bagel. It's incredible. If you guys haven't tried it, it's great. <laughs> Jess is truly trying to feed the unfed, and she is creating a dining experience where it is open and welcome to all, and we love that. Hey, Jess! Hi! Congratulations! Thank you so much! Hi! Welcome! Hey, it's Jess. This is Ty. Hi! Ty! It's good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it smells delicious in here. Thank you. Baking is something I've always wanted to learn how to do, but I get the feeling that I'm not going to be great at it because you have to follow instructions. I'm telling you what, it's more about intuition. So I could do it. Absolutely. I think we should try. I'd like to. Okay, my friends, I want to talk to you about something important around here, and that is quiche. The first thing that I want everyone to learn that works here is how to roll out the quiche crust. Ah. Okay, you're going to take this dough, kind of massage it, get it working. Yeah, okay, yep, your edges are a little rough there, Ty, but... They've said that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. oh. That's perfect, Amanda. I like how you've done your edges. So, you want to try the flip? Yeah. All right. Flip it and rip it. Yeah! Very nice. Sweet. Well done. Well done. Okay, yeah. So we're just missing like the whole edges of the quiche, but this was a <laughs> great start. I mean, it's close. <laughs> Except for not. We're up for a taste test. Nothing that we've made, but we'd love to taste what you've made. <laughs> All right, let's do it. This is the beer cheese scone. That's right. How much beer is in here? Because I could use one right about now. Oh, right? That was really, <laughs> really, really good. I feel like you have like an opportunity to kind of like redefine how great gluten-free can be. I think it's our mission now to set gluten all the way free. I mean... <laughs> Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one town, focusing on the businesses at the heart of their main street? The revolution became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for a $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the season five winner. Hello, Fredonia! But what started as a revitalization for Fredonia, New York, became a desperate struggle for small businesses across the country. Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are rolling up their sleeves doing what they do for millions of small businesses every day. And they're not alone. Renovation icon Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings, while a whole cast of experts and partners help Fredonia's entrepreneurs face down a global economic crisis. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds. If in a moment unlike anything this team has ever seen, we can keep the revolution alive. try to have certain expressions of feeling when I'm making certain dishes. So I try to put, you know, like a sense of nurturing into some of the cakes. And I do that based on what I'm feeling I need to bring to the world that day. Just made this hot chocolate cake and it was like cold, but it was warm and it like melted in your mouth and I was like, dude, I like went within myself. I was like ego, super ego. It like <laughs> fulfilled everything. It's just warm. It's just you walk in here and you always feel welcome and there's always somebody here for you. That had to be part of my mission, you know, saying every person who comes through that door deserves the same respect and dignity as every other person. I want that in the food. My husband and I had kids pretty early on after college. I was all set to be a stay-at-home mom and then go back to teaching when I was ready. 
and the needs of our children came on board pretty, pretty heavy. A couple of our kids were experiencing like the progression of Tourette syndrome. When you have a baby who starts presenting some really bizarre symptoms that even doctors don't know what's going on, that feels really, really scary and isolating. And there was, I just knew that there was no way that I was gonna be able to go back to teaching. It's interesting, a lot of people with Tourette also have these comorbid conditions. So two of my three kids also have gluten intolerance or celiac. Medically, it's absolutely essential for a person with celiac to not be exposed to gluten. And so we were just, just in this whirlwind of trying to find the right kinds of support that we needed for our family. I think that I thought gluten-free was gross because what was at the store was gross. All these um, really bizarre foods that I just didn't want to feed my family. So I decided I needed to create recipes that would feed the whole family with no complaints. And I knew that if I was having this much trouble, there would be plenty of other people who were having the same problem. So all of those recipes kind of became, you know, what I'm doing here. Can you set the timer for two minutes, Mama? Sure. When I opened up this bakery, my mom wanted to be involved in some way. And so she decided to retire from her nursing career and come be basically like my first mate. The first year when we were renovating the shop, we were here until nine or 10 every single night. It was in pretty rough shape, but we could see the, the vision. My kids learned a little bit about drywall, a lot about painting. <laughs> and they've really learned how to be flexible with like being where mom needs to work. Before she came, I just never ate anything special, you know, because you couldn't really get anything around here. I went in one day and I saw gluten-free and I went, yeah! I can always find 20 minutes to come in here and get a treat. So that's always good. Yeah. I'm gonna get in trouble because <laughs> I'm on the food board at school. The on-campus food is not up to this <laughs> level. I had no realization that this was gonna become the place to be in such a short amount of time. And in some cases, we were scaling above like what we could really manage. It was coming in and going out, right? It was like the food costs went through the roof. So all the aspects of learning to run a business, I've had to learn kind of on the fly. This is Jess over at Om Nam Gluten Free. You, you really put your family in a vulnerable position when you start a business, and that's such a scary feeling. I mean, people don't realize, like, your POS system, your payroll, you know, all the insurances. That's a lot of cookies to sell. <laughs> I've had moments where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I, I need so much of my family's help, and yet I'm not bringing home any money for them. So I feel like I need to know everything. I need to learn it all. <laughs> I need help with all of it. Most entrepreneurs actually don't start their business because they want to get rich. They set out to fill a need, and their understanding of that need is often deeply personal. But then you open your doors and suddenly you're spending a lot more time worrying about the health of the business than the need you are trying to meet. That's why we brought in Teresa Fox and Arwen Birch, co-owners of Glam Doll Donuts, Minnesota's most celebrated purveyor of baked goodness. These ladies went through the school of hard knocks and they came out the other side with both their business model and their passion fully intact. about this expert match. Yeah. This is the dining room area, right? It's pretty small, but it's creative. Yeah. Um, up here usually is like our handwritten menus. This is where we do our sandwiches. Right here is the baking kitchen. Okay. So we do all of our baking right here. It's crazy tight. We don't even have a proper stove top. We're definitely maxing out our space. So this I'm is gonna be the, the hallway to the back room. Totally unfinished, as you can see. And then back through these are the rooms. So this That's used to be a tattoo one, shop, um, and before that it was a dentist office. Oh, uh, a lot either way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, okay, because is this the only cooler you have? Yes. Wow. So this, between this and the salad unit, it's really, uh, yeah, you can imagine. I don't, I've actually been offered 
um, an old walk-in cooler from a friend's restaurant that has closed. How much stuff are you cooling? Do you need an entire walk-in cooler? Because those take, I, like, the electric bills for my walk-in cooler yeah, are ridiculous. Are they? They're yeah. huge. You can innovate as well. I think that you could get, you're so good at scrappy, you know? You can right. really yes, scrappy. No, exactly. You know, make it happen. Well, let's, Creativity, but let's go, go, that, let's right? go eat um, <laughs> gluten-free goodies and start talking. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. let's do it. <laughs> The first thing that I think would be really helpful is to really kind of understand and know your ambitions or goals for the business. I think that it's important moving forward to make sure that my business model is sustainable so that the business can keep being a business. I initially had hopes of taking a salary, even a very small one. And over time, I realized that in order to grow and, and run the payroll where I needed to for the amount of food we're making, um, that I needed to stop taking any money from the business. Working for a purpose is genetic in my family. So, that, you know, I'm not unfamiliar with the idea of living frugally uh, so that I can feel like I'm doing the important work of the world. Oh, so, what if we, I love that. That's yeah, amazing. That's great. <laughs> yeah. But what if we get you to a place where you don't have to choose between the two things? That's like making money is revenue. not in conflict with your mission, right. it will enable. Your Absolutely. Mission. So right. is it because you're not full all the time or is it because we need to supplement it with maybe one or two more wholesale partnerships to, to get you right. to a place where there's a little bit more reliable income? I feel like I'm close. I feel like I'm 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 coming in close for being able to start to take a little bit of a salary. Have you thought about expanding out of gluten-free? Just like broadening your menu a little bit? Actually, in order to keep this a medically safe space for people who have celiac, we can't have gluten in the shop at all. We're actually the only place in the entire region that is providing that. So in eight counties, that's like, you know, 200,000 people. It's interesting because, you know, typically a marketing challenge in the restaurant category is we're one of 10 pizza shops in town. How do you make sure that you stand out and differentiate yourself amongst those 10? Mm -hmm. Yours is a little bit different. We have to figure out there is a sizable addressable market who has needs for these kinds of food. But how do we make sure that the wider area knows that you're here. Yeah. I feel like the marketing piece, it's a huge opportunity for you. Are you open to logo exploration as a part of this process? As we yeah. look at your total brand experience, I think this would be the time to look at it. I think that it's foolish to not be open to new ideas, you know? But I will say that every aspect of our logo, our fabric designs, our, our graphics, all of those have been local women artists, and I love that that essence is right in what we have. So it's hard for me to think automatically about branching away from that. But I'm the not... textures and the fabrics can stay the same. Right. But yeah. right now, what concerns me about your logo is it's you're very right. hard to yeah. reproduce. I don't think it reads right away all yeah, the I things didn't. that you I, do. I picked up the box to look at it because I was like, yeah. and I couldn't necessarily tell it was a loaf of bread right away because of right. the shades of gray and the right. and the sticker and stuff. And it's right. just like, that's what should, like, should pop. But there are so many different aspects about your brand that can tell your story. So all that eclecticness and right. like local artistry like can right. still remain. I mean, this is a rich story in the fact that you know everything that is in each item that you make. Yes, I do. Right? <laughs> They're all my recipes. Yes, yeah. people want to hear that story. Yeah. They want to hear the origin story about why you started. I think an output of that should be, you know, some sort of literature that you can offer to businesses that you want to develop wholesale partnerships with. Really kind of selling them on why you would be the right partner to bring in so that you're not having to recreate that every time. It's, it's everything because it stops yeah. you from stopping yourself. Like you probably have come across these partnerships. You probably know people that you could send this information to right now. Yeah, but it's creating sure. the information that gets in your way. Yeah. You know, if you have some of these bigger contracts, you'll just have more predictability all the way through the revenue yes. stream. Perfect. Um, That's where wholesale is nice because you're right. just putting oh, it out yeah. there. It's you're not worried about who's walking in your doors and that's how you're gonna hit those 200,000 people, you know? Yeah. It's like by putting it in places they're already going. Right, right. You know? What we love about Jess is that she truly created this space and this place to take care of other people. But this process is designed to take care of her. You can feel the eclectic vibe that she's going for. You can feel the community. You can feel all of her intentions. It just, it just needs to be tied up with a bow a little. Working with the Glam Doll Girls, we really talked a lot about the fact that she either needs to use the space for a more commercial kitchen if she's going to lean more into wholesale or perhaps more dining. But either way, we need to kind of just really open up this space. So how, how, how much open? Are we talking about trying to move this wall? 
Um, I know that it's a structural support wall, so oh. maybe parts of it could come out. If that's the case, <laughs> you could cut out sections. Right. But it looks like you've got plumbing and right. I'm guessing a little bit of electricity. Yeah. I mean, the, to be honest with you, you do have a lot of space back here. There's a lot you could do with this. Yeah. You may have to just cut a big window into yeah. it. Maybe we're not quite at the, at the stage of the process to decide how we're going to use this space, but we know we need the additional space. Yeah. Omnom's impact goes way beyond their gluten-free patrons. Jess has made sure that every single person who walks in that door feels like they belong. But that aspect of her business was about to change completely, along with everything else. I never anticipated a complete shutdown. Initially, I realized, okay, I don't know what's, what's going on, but I know I have to be creative. By the end of 2020, they're estimating that the restaurant industry will lose as much as $240 billion. And 80% of restaurant owners say they are uncertain they'll survive the pandemic. It's scary to think how many places we might lose. The ones that are managing okay are doing it with takeout and delivery. Over 90% of restaurant traffic has moved off premises, but just as nothing, if not adaptable. I came up with a pre-order bakery boxes. It's all porch pickup, prepaid, zero contact. Feels like a really safe and secure way of doing it. I wanna feed these people who need me. <laughs> That's why I feel like I need to figure out a way to make this happen. Given the size and loyalty of Justice Market, her boxes of baked goods were going to be in demand. But she needed a way for people to order them and all of her other staples. Deluxe has built thousands of e-commerce sites for small businesses across the country. And we often spend weeks collaborating with business owners to perfect the online experience. But these were desperate times. Our team at Deluxe stood up Justice e-commerce page in two days. I know Jason worked on a quick website. Um, so good. <laughs> Yeah, for online ordering, would you want the boxes on there? Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> Easy online ordering has suddenly become a huge driver of restaurant choice. It's the new ambiance. And people are actually trying new restaurants at a pretty high rate, if those restaurants are offering good curbside options. One of the most important things we need to do is actually claim your Google listing to let your customers know that they can now do curbside. Right now, you're actually listed as a retail store. So we're going to want to change that to bakery. Uh, we can actually say gluten-free as well as a vegan restaurant. Awesome. So imagine being a bakery and you can't get flour. One of the impacts of COVID was that Jess's supply chain was cut off. So she came up with a new recipe for making her own flour. She's calling it perseverance. It was clear she's devoted to making the most delicious gluten-free items on the planet. What's not clear is, is she going to be able to attract people to come to Fredonia um, during this pandemic? Are they gonna be willing to drive two hours to pick up something on a porch? Right now, she's seeing signs of hope, but we've got a lot more work to do to make sure that, that she survives this pandemic. We needed to find a way to keep working on the big picture to give just solutions that would last for months, not weeks, and continue to serve her when things finally return to normal. So we found a big empty space in Minneapolis, built out a command center, and gathered the squad to figure out where we go from here. It feels like because we're faced with this challenge of this pandemic, the best thing we should do is just continue to open up the space and then figure out what is going to work better for her, converting it into more cooking space, or into more seating because we just don't know if that's even gonna be a thing anymore. In many ways, you guys are in the same boat. So what are some of the things you guys are starting to think about as you face this challenge? How to bring the experience that was previously had inside to the customer outside. Online presence is gonna be more important than ever. That is gonna be people's first experience with us now. Yeah. The other thing I think we're gonna to wanna to think through too is the packaging. She has those signature pink boxes, but what else could we do around the packaging? What a great opportunity to have all that branding out there. Exactly. Yes. We know this is gonna be a really difficult time for Jess, so while she's just trying to figure out how to continue to make food, we can take care of these other things. With a plan in place, we got to work on building Omnom's brand, and that meant a ton of remote collaboration, starting with getting Jess's eyes on our first round of logo concepts. Unlike the first concept that is very commercialized feeling, um, this is really wrapped in love. That's so great. But there was one thing from the first one that I loved, and that's um, keeping the name gluten-free in with bakery and cafe. 
While Jess was working with the team from Deluxe on Design, inventing new ways of making flour back at the bakery, and homeschooling three kids, she was also connecting with Teresa and Arwen on everything from kitchen layout to COVID operations. Hey, Jess. Hi. This is kind of like our, what, seating area right here? You yeah. You know, like yeah. our lobby where we like to like promote local artists and usually where we let the community hang out and yes. have a good time, but we haven't gotten to do much of that lately. We got crafty and built some shelves in the window so that we can still display our product to people safely and they can still have their experience. And, um, and we, we built a, you know, pandemic oh, door. Speakeasy <laughs> pandemic door here. <laughs> and then uh, we had some friends in the neighborhood build us this vestibule so we can like take walk-up orders on both sides. And then we come over here, box all of our pre-orders over here. Yeah. That's like, you know, crazy morning prep. All right, so we're taking you back to what we call the big kitchen. We kind of operate in a circle back here, you know? What I'm finding is that, yes, I'm gonna need more space to increase my yeah, yeah. <laughs> kitchen efficiency. As we're able to rephase in customers, what are you thinking regarding like a separate area for boxing your pre-orders? It's gonna be interesting because I don't think things will go back to exactly the same way of like people just piling in. So I think pre-ordering is still gonna be really strong, especially for the next couple of years. Dedicating one wall to like a shelving unit, condense it so it's going vertical instead of like yeah. spreading out all over the place. Converting to a majority takeout model magnified the importance of everything we were trying to create, from to-go boxes, to website and social media, to the new logo that would be featured in all of those places. As you can see in that primary large top one, uh, we've added in gluten-free. I feel like I'm gonna make weird noises. I love it so much. <laughs> like, I, just, I just feel like it, it's gonna be like, ah, guys, come here and take a look. <laughs> I like it, it's it, really cool. It feels good, yeah. Hey. As we built out those tools that would help Omnam make the big curbside pivot, we needed to get Jess's go ahead in the direction we were moving. So we reconfigured command control, added a boatload of screens, and got ready to present her with our progress. Your current name is Omnam Gluten Free. That limits us from increasing your reach further into the population. We want to make sure that people recognize that you're a bakery, that you have a cafe, but even though we're taking gluten-free out of the actual proper name, we're not going to lose what we call search authority around that. I love bringing bakery and cafe right into the name because that is what we are. I also love keeping that gluten-free right on there. If people with celiac don't see gluten-free right on that logo, they're not even going to ask because they know that it's not a safe place for them. Right now, obviously, people can't come in uh, to buy your incredible baked goods, and so we really want to make sure that we're standing up a website as quickly as possible. So we're looking at your old site right now. So Vicki, what were some of your initial reactions? First of all, it's great that you have a site. Most businesses don't. so. That was wonderful, but it was missing that community that you always had. And I kind of really wanted to put that in your website as well. And because you have such a story behind why you started this business, I feel like every page should show a bit of that. So people, when they come on, they can feel that energy. Yeah, so right away, we want them to know that Jess is the baker and that you're just this amazing person. We call it the hero shot, right? Yeah. I think it's awesome. The only thing I think I would change is under the Our Favorites, there's like a religious following for the peanut butter chocolate oat bar. So that should, and there, there are gonna be people see why. who disagree I would, with I me. I am part of the following, <laughs> totally. I think it should take the place of the raspberry one. <laughs> Carrie? So I'm super excited to talk about your packaging. You need it no matter what, so let's make it work harder for you. And we can also make sure we bring in that power pink, you know, with your new logo, and it kind of have a pop of pink on all your packaging, which will tie in with your signature pink boxes. Um, I think you had mentioned that you're paying sometimes up to 10 different vendors. So one of the solutions that we wanted to connect you with was um, our e-checks. They give you control over when you pay, I think it's a great idea. I like to do all my banking at home from the computer because family time is really important to me and I don't want to leave and go to the office for that. I really appreciate you all and I'm trying so hard to talk and not cry right now. <laughs> While the branding side was moving steadily in the right direction, renovations to just the space were lagging behind. Amanda, at this moment I think I'd really like to try and relax with you a little bit and just say this one word. Oh, so where are we with that? I'm guessing from the photo I'm looking at, 
Doesn't look like the stress has been uh, <laughs> taken away. Okay, well, you remember this this back room, right? Yeah. The, at the time, we were debating whether or not to open it up for dine-in yeah. or to increase the productivity of the kitchen. COVID kind of answered that question for us. We just need to get her capacity to be baking more. Yeah, we've taken away those walls. You've got a huge open space back here. But the one thing I did notice is like, you, there's a staircase that goes to a basement. Yeah, so what we want to do is actually put refrigerators down there. So I mean, really maximize her storage space. We were running short on time, but New York had started to flatten the curve. That made permits easier to come by. It also meant Jess could generate some much needed revenue. She had remained so positive throughout the whole summer. It was easy to forget that even before the pandemic shut down her dining business, Jess wasn't operating with much cushion. She would need a strong understanding of her books in order to weather this storm. So we brought in Morris Jackson from US Bank to lend some financial expertise. Give Morris a feel for how you're feeling about your finances. Mm -hmm. I brought a prop with me today okay. to show you where I'm at financially. This is last week's farmer's market money, and I haven't even had a chance to count it yet. <laughs> Money's in a brown paper bag, okay. <laughs> yeah, who has, who has time for this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, COVID has made a lot of changes in, in a lot of people's lives, but it allows you to reset. I just need a better system overall. Absolutely. So day to day, you have to start calculating for yourself, again, what are you, how much are you selling, right? But then how much are you spending at the same time? Because if you sell more cookies, you're gonna need more flour. If you sell more cake, you're gonna need more icing or whatever the case may be. You're gonna need more as you grow more. Is that just ingredients specifically or are we talking about like the cupcake paper and things like that too? Where does that fit in? Also in yeah, that same one, thing. right? Anything that helps produce that cupcake, even some of the labor costs, the time that goes into making that cupcake, you wanna add that in there as well. So you'll know exactly what is making you revenue and you know exactly what is a loss leader in terms of your line items. I feel like we should talk about the, the pros of moving to a more of a wholesale sales environment. With a bigger kitchen from you all, we can focus on trying to recruit some more restaurants as they reopen um, to provide their GF desserts and rolls. That's a great advantage for you as a, as a business owner. One, you, you can control the cost. You know exactly how much is going to go into making those items. Secondly, you don't absorb any unnecessary waste costs, right? Because once it's sold to that restaurant or grocery store, they now absorb any additional expenses that come along with it. Third, you get paid right away, right? Once the item is sold, you now make money off of that item immediately, which is more profitable for you at the end of the day. We just need to first figure out what are right. those popular items you can offer in bulk size. If you know from the small quantity perspective what it costs to make that one item, then we just have to multiply that by the bulk you want to sell it by, right? And so we can, we can absolutely figure out what that formula is and be able to help you calculate what will help you become more profitable with the wholesale side of it. I think this is going to be a really great source of revenue, reliable income to get you through this crisis. And then the cafe will be able to be there on the other side of this because the business will have survived. Through the months of work, we really felt like we'd gotten to know Jess. That strange intimacy that happens over hours of Zoom calls, being in each other's homes. So while it would have been wonderful to be back in Fredonia, presenting Jess with the results of all that collaboration and standing in her new kitchen, this felt oddly appropriate. We'd managed to get close at a distance. Normally, this is a part of the process where we would get to take a tour with you in person of your space. So since that isn't possible, Jess recorded a short video to show us all the incredible improvements within her cafe. Hi, it's been so long during the COVID shutdown that this one is taller than me now. I wanted to take a few minutes and show you all the amazing things that Deluxe has done for our business. It's really incredible. For starters, uh, with your suggestions, we pushed the countertops back and opened up our dining room for at least one other large table, so that's exciting. We got the new addition of our beautiful menu board here. Right now, I have a couple of our big new pieces of farmer's market equipment set aside in the kitchen. Deluxe bought us this great table. We've got one mixer set up over here, and then this is obviously the most exciting part of the kitchen renovations. Um, everything from a brand new freezer to new bun racks, tables, flower bins. We have a huge refrigerator over there. Mom and I love working back here together now because we have so much room to work with. Our favorite part of being in this hot bakery this summer 
has been the refrigerator because we can actually go inside. I'll be right back. <laughs> um, last but not least, our builders stretched their funds as much as possible so that they could put in a new storage space in the basement for us. I feel like we finally have enough room for everything. I even have a little spot down here for a desk under the stairs. Out in the yard, we have a new porch extension, and then we also have some new picnic tables in the side yard. So when we are able to open back up, we'll have a nice outdoor seating area too. With the tools that SBR and Deluxe have given Jess to work with, she's really set up for success. Exactly. Yeah. It's like anything that any first year business owner would love, especially in these times. Yeah. Are you ready to see the website? Here we go. Cute. All right, you can look. Oh, that's so perfect. I love that. Yeah. It's so important to use real photography on a business site. So there's a carousel of images down here actually that go through showing your actual baked goods. I need that bagel. <laughs> we want to show Nana with Hazel and we want to show you interacting with customers with that signature pink box at a, at a farmer's market. And then pointing to some of the resources for those who are living gluten free. Building good, useful information into just a site meant the broader community she was trying to reach would have an easier time finding her. 10% of all queries on Google are actually in the form of a question. So we built this like an FAQ page, but also including some of your other resources. It's beautiful. You are like really trying to feed people that are like not thought about every day by everywhere else. So, and it just, to have all of that information on there is super important for that. We always want to make it as easy as possible for the visitor to your site to get to what they're seeking out. And so in the top nav of the home page, we give people the option to order online. Again, that e-commerce piece is going to be so important for the foreseeable future. And we want to make sure that that is something that the visitor can find right away. So uh, while you had some of your menu items before, now we have your full menu online. We're using really beautiful photography to break up the sections of your menu. The other thing we wanted to make sure that we added to your menu page was a quick search functionality. So much like walking someone through the kinds of menu items that might be appropriate for them, now your menu page can actually do that for you. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Having just this full menu online would ensure that Omnam's site contained the kinds of keywords that would optimize it for search. And just claiming their Google listing a few months back had already led to big results. This was where you were at before, and this is where you're at now. So you have had an over 300% increase in the search Ooh. volume that is being returned to your listing. I'm even watching this right now and going, I gotta go to my Google exactly. list and make sure I got all the right <laughs> words. So, I mean, I'm learning too. <laughs> we go, thanks for your help, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> so, under your table, you do not get a car, but you get a box full of swag. Oh my God. So we put your, we put your logo on a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, I, I don't know what, I want, <laughs> do I get a swag bag? I know, it's the one under our table. Okay. <laughs> Everything we gave just needed to feel like Omnam, and that meant using recycled materials for every item. Because as adaptable as Jess is, on some things, she does not compromise. Not only is your food delicious, it looks fantastic. So we wanted to add Cute. windows to the boxes. Let's brand the heck out of that moment, right? Like, well, who says brand the heck out of something? That's you just do. a weird thing to say. <laughs> Did you? Okay. We have all those uh, really great to-go orders coming in through the new e-commerce part of your site. And so we want to make sure we're branding those moments along the porch. It's so pretty. There's one more thing that we wanted uh, to share with you. We're so moved by your personal story. And we know how important the Tourette's Association of Northern New York has been to you and your family. And so we wanted to do something special to honor and recognize your commitment. But I'm not there, so I need some help on your end. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, thank you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, if you only knew what the Tourette Association has done for us over the years. So 
giving them money that they desperately need is incredible. Thank you so much. I see you, Arwen. Um, I can't. Why? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> We're just so excited about how you're not only going to survive this crisis, but truly thrive, and you're set up for success. Thank you. My kids have taught me everything about taking a hardship and turning it into opportunity. So this weaves it all together. Thank you. That's incredible. I can't even believe it. <laughs> Jess has this ability to remain calm in the face of events that feel completely overwhelming. It's because this isn't her first time doing something hard. She's been tested. She knows exactly who she is. And incidentally, that's why she's so good at making the people around her feel like they can be who they are too. I hope someday soon, Omnam can safely reopen their doors. Fredonia could really use that love. But until then, we'll just have to taste it in her food. You don't have to win the small business revolution to get the marketing makeover that will take your business to the next level. To find out how Deluxe can help your small business, go to deluxe.com revolution. Salesforce is committed to helping small businesses tackle big challenges. And we're honored to join Deluxe in the small business revolution, working alongside the entrepreneurs of Fredonia, New York, to help one town get through these extraordinary times. Visit salesforce.com slash small business to learn more. Vineyards Golf Course is a haven for the golfing community of Fredonia, New York. The more of the average person come out and golf and have a good time. Everyone appreciates all that she does for the community. But operating costs may drive Debbie out of business. I have like over $100,000 invested into it, my savings account. Can the small business revolution help Debbie and Vineyards stay on course? So we still have a little bit of work to do. This is exactly what they need. This is ambitious. Is this even going to be possible? Now streaming on Hulu, Prime Video, and smallbusinessrevolution.org.